Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'll be doing some fine art macro photography using feathers just like this. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Leo and thank you very much for joining me. Today, like I said, we're going to be looking at fine art macro photography using feathers, just simple feathers. These are some feathers that I got off a craft store and I think I paid 50 pence for them. These ones I think are off a pheasant, but they've got absolutely fantastic detail and I'm absolutely loving them. And they seem to hold the water droplets brilliant. I think feathers are really one of the un most underestimated things to use for photography and macro photography because if you look very closely, there's a, they've got a lot more to them than actually you can see. Okay, it's a bit more harder working with them because they can take on a lot of water quick. So you've got to be very gentle. It's a bit of trial and practice, but these make absolutely stunning fine art pictures and you're going to get a different picture every time you use one. If you didn't see my last video, I'll leave a link up here. I bought this colour changing LED light bulb. It's got like a soft glow effect and it's absolutely brilliant, absolutely fantastic. I've been using it for the last couple of weeks now and it changes colour and you can never get the same colour. So along with this and a bit of backgrounds, a little bit of background, you've got an absolutely fantastic picture. You can move it around and place it wherever you want. And you, the colours, you can like say there's, there's 47 different colours. I think there is on that one. You can never get the same colour. But when you add it to a picture with water drops and, you know, close up photography, it absolutely is a massive game changer. Now, the settings are a bit different to this to what we normally use because we're not going to use a flash. We're actually going to be use the bulb as our light. So the settings may be a bit different, which I'm going to show you. But believe me, by the end of this video, I am going to make sure you have got now these pictures 100%. So get ready. Okay, I hope you're ready. I'm going to get the setup all sorted now. It's quite simple and it don't really take a lot of time because, like I say, it's simple. The first thing to do is select yourself a nice feather. And what we're going to do is we're going to select a feather with nice down on it. The down is the best, but the, what, the bit that we need, because the down is what's going to hold the water droplets. And it, believe it or not, it, it, it holds the colour as well. So once we've got our down, what we're going to do is find where the top bit meets it, because we don't need all of it on. So what we're going to do is just we're going to clip it off like that. We don't need this bit, but I will use that in a minute. So I'm going to put that safe. Now, that is ideal now to start off with. So what we're going to do now is strip the bottom off. Only a bit. I'm going to get myself some blue tack modelling clay, wherever it takes your fancy. And just put it in. Now, you need this as flat as you can. This is the most important thing is to get it as flat as you can because we want the best flocal plane for it so we need it super flat so there you go now that is actually ready to go but we need a background first now I have tried lots of different backgrounds I've used my spongy on the back of it with the light do you know what I mean just push there like that and I've got some good results but I'm going to be using silver foil. Now, tin foil or aluminum foil, yeah, it's got two sides to it. One's very shiny, and the other side is a bit more or less shiny. We're going to use a dull side because I don't want too many highlights. But it's the highlights that give you the character in your pictures. In this instance, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to get it and just scrunch it up a bit. The reason why I'm scrunched up is if you see all the textures in my background, it's because the scrunch that does it. Well, a bit simple, but still. So all I'm going to do then is flatten it back out a bit. There you go. If you want to get really technical, 
If you get it and just flatten it out a bit more with your hands, like that, it's better. It gives you more detail and more clarity, more, you know, depth, detail. So what I'm gonna do then, is I'm just going to get it and simply put the modeling clay back around it. As you see, I don't do no cuts. Good. And there we go. That is one now ready to add a thing to it. All I'm gonna do is now this is what I do. When I've once I've got it to where I want it, I sort of bend the foil to make it a bit harder and like a cup shape. So it's rounded, as you can see. This is just to give the light better chance of coming around the subject and making it a lot better. So it should come round it, like that. So now all we're ready to do is set the camera up, add some water drops, because all I'm going to do now is I'm gonna get it spray from a distance i'm going to keep spraying it now and just put a few on when i'm going to take the picture when i'm ready to take the picture what i do is i get my syringe and i'll try and drop the droplets on what i actually do is just spray them on gently spray and this will give you your droplets to photograph, to photograph straight away. And that is how easy it is to set up. Now all I'm gonna do with the light is I'm gonna shine it round and it's gonna give me all different colors. You ain't gonna see it on there because like I said, the light on light on light, but we're gonna use it. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to dim my lights down now on the camera lights to see this. So that's ready, that's all done. Simple. Set up, finish, seconds. I'm gonna be using today, I'm gonna to be using my trusty 750D, because I don't know why I don't use it a bit more often, but lately I've been using my 7D, but like I say, my 7 is playing up, so. I'm gonna be using my 100mm Mac, uh, Canon macro lens. If you've got any other lenses, that's all fine and wicked, brilliant. But also, what I've used is a 20mm extension tube, which I've put on there, and this, is just to give me that little bit more than what I need so I can get super close and then getting the edge out, I can just sort of block in what I need on my picture. So now I've got to set all this up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the camera up, set it all up so you can see it a bit more in action. And as always, you're gonna see back of the camera, the settings, I'm gonna explain why I'm using my settings as why I am, because it's a bit more of a challenging one, like I said, cause you're light. So we're gonna to have to use a bit more longer exposure than normal. So let's get behind the camera. Before we go onto the back of the camera, I've got to emphasize how we need the feather perfect flocal plane. This means that we haven't got to up our f-stops to the maximum. We can use lower f-stop to get what we want. So I'll try to keep as flat as I can. And like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cave and we're sort of just gonna crinkle everything in. It just makes a lot of light trap, should I say. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna focus in to make sure that we got what we want. And that to me looks perfect. And then when I'm, when I'm taking the shots, what I'm gonna be doing is, come on. Oh yeah, the green one. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be rolling the light over, not in front of the lens, not the back of the lens, I'm gonna be rolling it over as I'm taking a shot, because like I says, I'm gonna timer anyway, two second timer, so I'm gonna roll it along, and that's how I'm gonna get my shots. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna introduce a spray. I'm gonna spray it a little bit, not a lot, I'm just gonna put a tiny few on. I'm gonna spray from a distance. That's enough for me because I can zoom in lower, but I can't take, I can, I can put little bits on and add more, but I can't take it off. So I'm gonna leave it at that for that. Now I'm just gonna check my 
Because I'm just going to have a look at my focus and that don't look too bad. That don't look too bad at all. And what we got? Yep. I'm going to have to bring that back a bit. Okay, I'm going to have to bring it back. That's it. That's perfect. But I've kept it level. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt it on. Like that. Short bursts is ideal. And, and get what you want. Well, keep having a look through your viewfinder. Because you never know, you might get something you really like and you washed it off. And there you go. So as I take the shot, what I'm going to be doing, like I said, is rolling it over. Two second timer. And I got what I want straight away. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put you on the back of the camera, the lens, and show you where we go. We're at the back of the camera now and you can, all, you can see my settings as clear as day. 1.8 for the power, I've had to up to, to F10, ISO 100, and that's, that's it, really, to be fair, because that's all we need. It's the 118 for the power that's actually going to stop the light that flashes. I'm going to say, so what I've had to do is put it on a two second timer, as you can probably see. Now, I'm going to take a quick shot just to show you without what happens without the light. And that's all we're going to get. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce the light. And there you go, straight away. That's the with a blue one. Absolutely gorgeous. Drop dead gorgeous. That's how easy it is. And that is straight on the back of my camera. You've just seen that one. I can take one again just to show you. There you go. Now, dear friends, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the colours and have a look and see what I get. That's a lovely shot there. Look at that. Look at the greens and the yellows you can get in there. That's unreal. But if I change the colour, if I move it light about, it should change, I think. Let's have a look. See, there you go. That is something that you don't see every day. And I think now, from an old 7D Mark II, is absolutely brilliant. And like I says, it ain't nothing now, there's nothing odd to this shot whatsoever. Have we got a purple? Can we try a purple? And that's a lot better to me. I can open that up, I can brighten it up, I can make that look something totally different to what it is. Oh, I love this. This is my colour at the minute. It's absolutely, this and orange. These pictures can actually be made into anything. It makes you give it a, such a feeling that it's unreal. I mean, <laughs> tell me if you can get any better shot than that with an i99 light and a 7D. Because to me, that is uh, brilliant. That's fantastic. And like I says, You've seen my settings, I don't lie, they're all there on the back of the camera. I'm absolutely loving it. You see how I set it up? You're spraying the water on it, absolutely brilliant. So I think I'm gonna give one last shot. I think, I shall see if I can, what I can change. And there you go. And all I'm doing is I go in my light and just pour it in rounds. So let me tidy everything up and then once again, we'll get back and we'll have a bit of chat and I'll explain a tiny little bit more before we go. I hope you've enjoyed that bit of a demonstration. I've really enjoyed doing it today. It's been absolutely brilliant. Some of the stuff that we have lying around the house, I mean, yeah, we ain't gonna find feathers lying around the house. Well, we do if we rip the duvet cover or something and pinch them out of there, but you better not do that. But we all can be creative, and this is what I'm loving about my photography at the minute. The more stuff that we learn, the more we can be creative. I don't care if people think it's not fine art photography or it is fine art photography. That's an argument for another day. I ain't really interested in that. To me, this is my interpretation of art photography and water drop photography, and I love it. I have got some more, one or two more ideas coming up. In fact, what I was videoing today, this come through the post. I ain't gonna show you, I ain't gonna tell you. I ain't even put a picture up yet, so. It just shows that it's a bit top secret at the minute, but you'll enjoy it. And it only costs $7.99, so another cheap one to play with. And it looks fun, and I think I can sort of make it work. I have got a big announcement to make, but 
the person who is doing it at the minute, Mandy, has left it at home, so I couldn't get it off her. So, in the next video, I'm going to be announcing something new for you subscribers, well, for you people, should I say, all of you, that you might quite be like and might be interested in. But like I say, I hope you've enjoyed today. It's been a bit of a fun. Just enjoy yourself. Enjoy your photography. That is the main thing. And don't forget, what, we, what I see through my eyes and what you see through your eyes is totally different. So just experiment and see. Let your mind wander. Think what you want and think of a story when you're taking the picture. And it will really help you. It will really make you look deeper into it. If you got to the end of this video, thank you ever so much. And please, please, please hit the like, subscribe button. If, if you know anybody who's interested, whether it's your photography club, your nan, your gran, your dog, your cat, your budgies, your auntie, I don't really care. Give them a shout and give them, tell them about me, please. A few more subscribers won't go miss, but we'll get there. I am plugging away as hard as I can now to try and push my channel again. Because like I say, the more I push my channel, the more I can do. But I hope you've all enjoyed yourself. And until next week, be creative, stay safe and happy snapping.